Now, what do you think is the most challenging part of being a channel or doing this kind of work as a general statement? I would say at, at a personal level, at an Addison level, it, you know, it's been really hard to find when you when I, when I meet new people, you know, if I'm trying to like make new friends, if I'm out talking to people, it's hard to describe what I do. Sometimes I, I just say I have an internet business or, you know, I'll talk about my, the business work that I do because I, I do do business consulting and executive coaching, which is like real world business stuff. So sometimes I'll just talk about that. But then some people want to say, oh, can I go to your website and see what you do? And on my website, I've got everything from channeling to courses to the business work. And so sometimes people go to my website and then I never hear from them again uh, because they see the channeling stuff and they go, oh, I don't like, I don't like that. So I'd say at a personal level, um, making new friends can be a challenge because some people just disappear. You know, from, from a professional level, I, I, I might say as, as a channeler, Metatron is always challenging me to move forward, always challenging me to change and transform and level up. So for, for me, my life, ever since I started doing this work has been change, change, change. So lots of movement. So that can be very exciting, but it can also be very unearthing sometimes, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to kind of be grounded and have your roots. So it's been a joy ride. It's been a wild ride for sure. But I'd say that's a challenge point is moving through a lot of change on a consistent basis. How do you balance like being a human and all your knowledge and experience in the spiritual side? Because from my understanding of talking to so many near death experiencers and channelers, having this energy from the other side is intoxicating sometimes. And you're just like balancing this human experience with that side can be challenging. How is it? How do you balance it? Well, you know, thank you for that question. It, it's been a, it's been very hard work to be able to get to a place of balance, quite honestly, for the first few years, I would say there was a lot of imbalance. And so I've worked over the last couple of years to balance human Addison, personal life, where I go to the grocery store, uh, I'm a guy, I do guy things, I go on dates, I you know, go to professional networking events, I speak at conferences, I do real world stuff. I also do kind of high knowledge stuff. And so I've gotten to a place where I really switch gears and I even ask Metatron, hey, give me some space, please. And, and so it's been like a boundary assessment, <laughs> just like you have boundaries with people in your life. I have boundaries with that work, with those energies and with that high knowledge. And so we've gotten to a place of good balance now. So, you know, I have office hours and I have work hours and I abide by those work hours. And so does Metatron. And then when I'm off, I'm off. I'm like a normal guy and I try to connect with people in normal ways. So, you know, I, I really, I really try to be just a normal person who does this work. Does that make sense? It does. It does. It's challenging. I can only imagine the challenge. I mean, I'm challenged just by doing this kind of work. Yeah. And balancing it out and trying to explain to people what I do. They're like, oh, you have a show. Wow, you have a lot of people watching. What's the show about? And I'm like, well, it's about a whole <laughs> lot of stuff. You know, and it's like near-death experiences, ancient civilizations, quantum physics, you know, channelers. And, and they go, wait, wait, what was that? Hmm. Channelers, what is that? And then I have to try to explain it to them. And they just sit there fascinated. So I think it's yeah. a bit, obviously, a bit easier for me because I, I, I'm separated from, I don't do the work myself. But there is a fascination I've seen where people before wouldn't even have given it a second thought, there is more of an open mindedness to mm -hmm. the ideas. And this is what I always say to people when they challenge the channeling thing. I go, I don't care if the guy is acting or if she's putting on a show. First of all, it's a hell of a hard hustle to do if they're hustling you. I mean, there's easier ways to make money. Uh, I mean, seriously, seriously. Instead of like completely changing my entire life, losing all my friends, <laughs> and, you know, changing everything to do this work. But secondly, if the work, the words that is coming out of their mouths is profound and helps you, take it. If it doesn't, discard it and move and move move on with life. But that's I I don't really care about the messenger. I care about the information. I care about the message, and that kind of puts things in perspective. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. And you know, I, this whole idea of people fascinated with channeling, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I've seen that as kind of an overall movement. You know, when it comes to channelers and channeling, pardon me, you know, I see, really see the, the range of, 
of experiences and you know kind of those that don't turn it off completely or run away from it some people are, are scared of it honestly of course but those who are who will give it a chance generally start off with like a sense of wonder awe fascination what's going on and like you really so beautifully said is is that the person talking what's what's really going on there and trying to logically understand what the mechanism is, which I think is beautiful because <clears throat> the concept or the mechanism of channeling is pretty complex. You know, we, we have personalities. People know us by our personality. So, you know, people know you, Alex. You know, people know how you behave. This is the way you talk. These are the things you say. This is how you smile. These are the jokes you tell. They have a be behavioral set in which they know you by. So when a whole new personality, a new behavioral set, along with new information comes in, people, sometimes people say, are you okay? <laughs> I get that a lot. Are you sure you're okay? All the way to fascination, to how you manage it, how, what is your process like? And then, you know, kind of really getting to a place of comfort and ease and saying, okay, I see what's going on here. Let me listen to the information. And I think that's kind of where you are. You maybe you've gone through those different stages and now you're saying, okay, let me get with the information because the information is generally very good. And so, you know, once people get to that range, then you can really listen and then decide what works for you, what doesn't work for you. You know, I tell people many times, you know, listen to the channeling, but you've got to be the judge. It's your life. What information do you use? What information do you think about? What information do you maybe say, yeah, but, or what do you discard? I'm a big believer in sovereignty. You know, you're a sovereign being, I'm a sovereign being. I choose, you choose. You choose what you want to believe, what you want to hear. In a way, everything is an offering. You know, the, a, what a channeler brings through is an offering of information. So it's up to the listener what they decide to hold on to, use or not. You know, the whole gift of channeling, which I think it really is a gift to, to, human, to humanity now, is, you know, kind of getting to know these high dimensional beings through personality and then understanding new ideas that may not normally come through. So you're, you're learning about all kinds of stuff that you're not going to read in the New York Times or the Washington Post or the LA Times or the Miami Times. You're learning about, about stuff that you don't get every day. And that uniqueness, I think, is, is a great joy and a gift for humanity. To watch the full video, click on the link below. And don't forget to subscribe.